At CES 2023, Ram debuted the 1500 Revolution electric pickup truck. But what most people aren't talking about is its revolutionary, no pun intended, battery that cuts weight and will increase range massively. Caltech's pentatonic battery system showcased at CES alongside the Ram Revolution. The Caltech's pentatonic battery system is a lightweight, customizable solution produced from thermoplastic or composite metal hybrid. Now, what is a thermoplastic? A thermoplastic is a class of polymer that can be softened through heating and then processed using methods such as extrusion, injection molding, thermoforming, and blow molding. Blow molding is what Caltech specializes in. Thermoplastics harden once cooled and do not show any changes in chemical property after being heated and cooled multiple times, making them easily recyclable, something we need for batteries. So this Caltech system offers advantages versus its steel and aluminum counterparts, including improved thermal management and insulation, resistance to corrosion, up to 40% reduction in CO2 footprint, and most importantly, a 60% reduction in weight. Additionally, the one-shot production process decreases downline complexity, eliminates welding, and reduces the system's existing bill of material. Now, why haven't other battery makers been making batteries encapsulated by high-quality, super-strong plastic? That's also lightweight, probably because of safety. Metal armor surrounds most batteries. We know lithium ion batteries can catch fire, blow up, can bust, unless they're lithium iron phosphate, which doesn't contain nickel or cobalt. And so manufacturers improve battery safety to use metal armor around the battery. This helps contains fires, but there are drawbacks to this armor. It is expensive and it adds weight. And since it can corrode, it should be regularly inspected as well. So does that mean this plastic battery will not be safe because it doesn't have a metal shroud? Not so fast because last fall, the system underwent rigorous testing in accordance with internationally recognized standards, including the Chinese GB38031 standard and the ECRR100 from the Economic Commission for Europe. The system successfully met the requirements for numerous tests, including mechanical shock, crush, drop, vibration, and bottom impact testing. So not only do we mention that it's lightweight, very affordable, and it has a quick manufacturing process, it is also very small. Pentatonic battery system requires less clearance between the enclosure and the modules due to the isolating characteristics of our materials and the increased integration such as cooling plates during the production process like thermal system components. So do you think the Ram 1500 Revolution has a revolutionary battery made largely of plastic that will help reduce costs, reduce weight, and provide more range. Only time will tell, but I wanted to add this in today's video. Over at Automotive News, number of US charging stations must quadruple through 2025 because 7.8 million EVs could be operation in the United States by that time. EVs make up less than 1% of the 281 million vehicles in operation today and at about 5% of new vehicle registrations from January through October 2022. EV market share for new vehicles likely to reach 40% by 2030. I don't believe that will happen in the United States states. What do you guys think? Do you think we'll get past that by 2040? I know some people say, hey, we're going to be mostly battery electric by 2030. 40% sounds a little too lofty to me. I'm thinking probably like 15% by 2030, but I'd love to be wrong. And I love to see your reasons down below. Currently, the U.S. has about 126,000 level two chargers and 20,000 level three charging stations. And these estimates exclude Tesla's nearly 17,000 superchargers because they're private. You can't access them if you have a Chevy Bolt, for example. And luckily, companies like Mercedes-Benz are opening a open source system from any manufacturer to use their charging network. S&P Global Mobility expects about 700,000 level two and 70,000 level three chargers will be necessary to support the EV fleet in 2025. Two years later, they're forecasting 1.2 million level two and 109,000 level three chargers will be required. And by 2030, 
the U.S. will need 2.13 million level two and 172,000 level three public chargers, more than eight times the number of charging stations available today. No, there's a lot of money being pumped in by the federal and state governments to make this happen. I just don't see it happening. But I got to cut myself off. I'll see what you guys have to say about the necessary increase of chargers, public chargers around the United States. Do you think we'll be able to not only have that many chargers, but will we have the 40% battery electric vehicle penetration in the new car market by 2030? I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay tuned for more Kirky Cars where I talk about industry auto news that pertains to electrification. Have a great day. Take care of yourselves and peace.